Hello, this is RV Vagabond Jerry, and you may have heard about the extremely low freezing temperatures that Texas was having about mid-February, which is a very rare thing for Texas to have such low freezing temperatures, and it was even down in the very south, far south Texas along the Rio Grande. And in this video, I'm going to tell you what my experience was with those low temperatures it was definitely a big problem for me now in my last video that I did at the Kickapoo Lucky Eagle Casino which is just uh, a few miles outside of the fairly small town of Eagle Pass Texas I was staying in the RV park that I showed you in that video that is part of the casino in the casino's parking lot I stayed there seven days that was my plan and for the first couple days that I was there it was very warm I had to use my air conditioner <laughs> during the day in the RV park had full hookups there that was just the first two days and then it started to get much colder and the last full day I was there was on a Monday and on the Sunday just before that the electricity started going in and out about every hour or so late in the day on the Sunday and then when I woke up Monday morning the electricity was completely out and it was out all day Monday what that means is I could not rely on electricity for heating of my motorhome now I do have a very good propane furnace works very well it actually looks works a lot better than the electric heating that I have I have a heat pump which is really my only electric heater that's built into the motorhome and it usually works pretty good but lately it hasn't <laughs> it would uh, blow out warm air for a while and then it would start blowing out cold air and then I could hear the decompressor coming back on it'd be warm for a while and then, it would, and then after a few minutes it would go cold again I got something wrong with that thing so not only could I not rely on it to work consistently all day long but when it gets down to about 40 degrees outside then it will not work at all and that's the way it is with all heat pumps they will not work about 40 degrees or lower temperature so I pulled out my space heater I keep a space heater right on me as I'm sitting at my table and that's good it provides a very good heat but only in about a two three foot range that's as far as it's going to go whereas the heat from the heat pump will warm up the whole front half of the motorhome but when my electricity was out, I couldn't even use that. So I had to rely totally on my propane furnace. And for the last few days I was there, it would be in the 30s up to, it would get up to as much as 45 degrees outside, but only for a little while midday if it's sunny. And the last part of the week, it did really clear up the skies and when it's all clouded over forget it <laughs> but when the skies are clear up the Sun is shining it of course does get more warmer and my solar panels were charging my batteries and when the Sun came out that worked very well so I didn't have to worry about that so I was getting along okay without the hookup electricity however when you're in an RV park with full hookups you don't have electricity then <laughs> there's not much point in staying there because you know I would fill up my fresh water tank and dump my waste tanks but other than that there's no electricity the RV park has nothing for me but when I woke up on Tuesday the power was still not back on and I figured well I'm gonna take off 
because this is not doing me any good to stay here if I can't get electricity. So I went out to dump my waste tanks. I had filled up my freshwater tank before it started getting very cold. So I had already a full, almost full freshwater tank. So when I went out to dump my waste tanks, I couldn't because <laughs> the valves were frozen. So I'm going to go outside now and show you the problem that I had with my waste tanks and also a big problem with the water filter housing. So the last thing I was going to do when I left the RV park was dump my waste tanks. When I opened up my wet bay here, this is what I found. First, the water filter housing had just cracked apart from where it goes up into here and it's frozen. There is ice right here. So as it froze overnight, somehow the ice just expanded the way ice does and just cracked it apart right there. That I have never heard of happening. So now I've got to get a new water filter housing and figure out how to get this piece off. Oh, it's coming off real easily. There you go. So you can see how it broke apart just like that. And if I get another one from an RV shop and put it on, it'll freeze again tonight. <laughs> now my water is flowing okay inside the RV. So I'm not sure just how the water flows through there affects everything. I thought the water had to go through there, which would mean that my whole wet bay would be totally flooded, and it's not. So that's interesting. And the other thing is, I tried to dump my waste tanks, but as I pulled this knob to open up my waste tanks, I found that both my black tank valve and the gray tank valve are frozen shut. <laughs> I pulled as hard as I could on those valves and I could not open them. So I had to leave the RV park without dumping my waste tanks and they are almost full. I can't tell just how full they are but it's now been over two weeks since I've dumped my waste tanks. So they are pretty close to getting really actually full. However, when I turn my water pump on, it does start running just with the pump being turned on. So I've opened there so it can leak out. Now, how it didn't, all my water didn't leak out yesterday or the last couple of days I don't know with that thing off because I have had my water pump switch on all day long so it could not be running all day long like that and here you can see my water tank the water line is up to here so it's more than half full so I had to leave the RV park with my freshwater tank about maybe three-fourths full, two-thirds of three-fourths, but with my waste tanks almost full. I had not completely filled them up. I think the gray water was about 90% full or 95%. I knew at some point, <laughs> especially if I took another shower, that that would really fill it up. And the black tank, I have never had a problem with filling up the black tank. But I had to leave with those full tanks. Now, when I drove through Eagle Pass, I saw that all the street lights were off, the traffic lights. And also, I was going to pick up lunch at some restaurant in Eagle Pass. 
All the restaurants were closed because the whole town had no electricity. The entire town, no electricity. So from there, I was going to Del Rio. And Del Rio is about an hour's drive from Eagle Pass. And I figured I would stay in the at the Walmart there, most likely. There's also an Elks Lodge there. But if they don't have electricity, then there wouldn't be any point in staying there. So when I got to Del Rio, driving through town, I saw that Del Rio, which is several times larger than El Paso, they didn't have electricity either. Restaurants are closed. The street lights are completely off, or some of them just had a flashing red light. But you know what? This is funny. The church's chicken place in Eagle Pass was open with a long, long line of cars to go through the drive through <laughs> And when I got to Del Rio, I saw that the church's chickens here, which I think I saw two, at least two, maybe three of them, they all had a long line of cars, while no other restaurants had any cars there. You could tell the restaurants were closed, but apparently church's chickens had the forethought to get generators <laughs> So in the case of a power outage, they could do a lot of business while all the other restaurants are shut down. Now, in case you don't know, the reason why the power outage covered such a wide area in Texas is because Texas relies on windmills to generate electricity, <laughs> even for some of the larger cities. I heard it's about 25% of the electricity for cities in Texas are generated by windmills. Well, the windmill froze up. <laughs> you get you get rain and or snow that causes moisture and it freezes up and it shuts down the windmills. They freeze up just like any other equipment. And by the way, on Sunday night at the RV park at Kickapoo it snowed and when I woke up Monday morning there was about three to four inches of snow coverage on the grounds everywhere as far as I could see even across the Rio Grande into Mexico they had snow over there so now I'm going to go back outside and show you what I found at Walmart in Del Rio so I went up to the entrance there and asked the man, there's a man standing there, someone to greet people. And I went up to him and he said that the store's not open today, there is no power. However, they are expecting the store to open up tomorrow. And he told me that half of the city of Del Rio has power back on and the other half of the city does it and they're expecting or at least hoping <laughs> that tomorrow the whole city will have power again and he said they are expecting to open up tomorrow by the way this walmart store in del rio is my favorite walmart to boondock at because on the side of the store here they have these really long parking stalls long enough for two at least maybe three RVs and at the front and back of each one of these long parking stalls they have painted on the concrete or actually asphalt here you can see it says RV park only and this is the only Walmart I've seen anywhere that actually has RV park only painted on parking stalls and has parking stalls specifically for RVs with a really long length, actually much longer than they need to be. So this is about as welcoming as you're going to get from a Walmart. Now I got through this whole situation fairly well because my motorhome is completely self-sustaining. However, it doesn't take kindly to freezing temperatures. 
and I'm just hoping that it didn't damage any of my water lines and I have had water flowing in my motorhome okay although I haven't showered lately so I'm not sure what that would do to my water so the main thing I have to do now is find a new water filter housing to replace the broken one and I think I should buy two of them just to have a backup in case this happens again where the water filter housing freezes up because the water does run through there to get to my fresh water tank and then I have to wait until the weather warms up I guess to dump my waste tanks if I had a way to heat up the valves then that would be okay that could be done with like a hair dryer type heater or just some kind of I do have another portable heater I could use but I have to have electricity for that and I can't run those space heaters off of my batteries it just takes too many watts to do that so I may end up with a completely full gray tank until I can find a way to dump my waste tanks now this is on Tuesday and according to weather.com it is supposed to start warming up this coming Saturday getting back up to normal temperatures 70 degrees it's supposed to warm up to 70 degrees unlike Sunday or Monday so it may be till then that I can actually dump my waste tanks so I'm gonna have to do a lot of wastewater conservation <laughs> until then this is something I've never gone through before I have never camped at a place where there was freezing temperatures for more than just one night and here it's several nights in a row that it's getting into the low 20s overnight and then even during the day some of the days it doesn't even get up to 40 lately I mean so this is a new experience for me and I just wanted to make a video of it to let you know what my experience has been dealing with these unusually cold temperatures in Texas Texans aren't used to this sort of thing including me <laughs> good day folks